in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed what is faith let me speak for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Are we learning already? The Bible talks about faith in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Four scriptures really in the whole Bible where he talks about faith as far as the just is concerned. It says, now the just shall live more than just obtaining results he says that just shall live by faith but if any man shall draw back my soul will not have pleasure in him the just shall live by faith in mark chapter 6 when you read from verse 1 to 6 the bible talks about jesus being surprised at the unbelief do we read that now for sake of time okay let's try it verse 2 very quickly the bible says he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished as he's saying they were trying to ask when did this man get the kind of wisdom and look at the mighty works that accompany that wisdom verse 3 he says it is not the carpenter's son the brother of james and so on and so forth and then verse 4 we're reading to 6 the Bible says, Jesus told them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Verse 5. And he could not do mighty works. The Bible never said he did not do. He could not do, meaning that he attempted to do certain things. Against what you thought that everywhere Jesus went, things were just happening. There were places that the Bible does not hide that Jesus was disappointed. He was disappointed he could not do any mighty work save that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And Jesus, the Bible says, he marveled because of their unbelief. That was a problem. The problem was not his power. The problem was not his Godship being questioned. That there was such unbelief in that place that not even the presence of Jesus could make any difference. Unbelief. The word of God personified was there, but unbelief made it of non-effect. Are we together now? So it is not just the presence of the word that generically produces miracles. There is a technology that makes the word potent. In this case, the word of God personified in the Christ was there and yet nothing happened. Unbelief. What is faith? Let's write a few definitions. If God is helping you, please say amen. amen. I'll give you two definitions very quickly. Number one, faith is absolute confidence in God and in the integrity of his word. Please write. Faith is absolute confidence in God and in the integrity of his word. Faith is absolute confidence in God and in the integrity of his word that is the first definition of faith i want you to have absolute confidence in god the bible says but i know whom i have believed it says and i am persuaded that he is able to commit to keep that which is committed unto him against that day i am persuaded a depth of confidence number two which is a very important definition. Faith is the name given to the action that you take. Please underline the word action. Faith is the name given 
to the action that you take based on your conviction faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction or in response to your conviction of who God is and the integrity of the person of, of his word, his person. Are we together? Faith in this sense is the name given to the action. Please someone shout the action. The action. One more time. Say the action. the action. So, I always like to use this example. Can I use a gentleman? Please come, my friend. Come, you two, both of you. Please stand here facing me. Stand here, stand here. All of you watch this. Watch this. Now, you stand here, my friend. Thank you. I want to give them, can someone give me anything that looks like an envelope, a gift, something? I want to give them something. Thank you. Thank you for this. God bless you. Now, watch this. Is it true that this is real? Let's assume that there's some money here. When you use money, church people seem to understand what you are saying. Are we together now? So, the assignment, watch this now. I have no particular bias for any one of them. And based on the abundance of what I have, I can sort any one of them. Are we together now? But I am not in their dimension. This is where I am. And this is the assignment of grace to open you up and say, listen, there is such a provision here. Is someone understanding what I'm doing now? So, ordinarily speaking, they would not know. But the grace of God has appeared to them. Telling them there is healing. There is prosperity. There is a life of victory that is in Christ. But the condition, listen carefully. Now, just knowing it does not bring them into the possession of it. If I ask you now, is there healing that I'm holding? No, sir. No, no, yes, I'm holding it. It's just that it's not in your life. You get the point now. Are you aware that I'm holding this envelope? Yes. Are you aware that I'm holding this envelope? Yes, sir. Is it in your hands? One year, two years, 15 years. You started learning this when you were a teenager. Now you are about to be a grandfather. You have not yet come into the possession. You will start teaching your children too. Don't ever doubt if they tell you there is an envelope. I remember when I was 12 years. It is not knowing that there is an envelope. It is accessing it and enjoying what is there. Are you getting the point now? Now watch this. I define faith as number one your confidence in God so you have to believe that I'm not scamming you and that is why the Bible is a compendium of God's integrity tested through different dispensations he gave us the right to probe and vet him and find out whether he's worthy of our believing him from Genesis to Revelation the Bible does not hide anything about God as far as his dealings with men is concerned so that we can vet him and find out whether he's worthy of our trust. The second definition, the name given to the action that you take. Believers, God is showing you where we have been missing it now. The action that you take. So it is true that you believe there is such a reality. But now, here is the instruction. And two of you, I want you to do something for me. I will start with you. I'm going to ask you to come and receive this. I want you to do any other thing. If you want, go there. If you like, stroll. If you like, sit down. But don't come. You get your, your own now. We're acting a drama now. And then for you, when it's your turn and I say come, I want you to walk gallantly and come and receive it. Ready? So this guy got born again before this guy. Are we together now? And now, here is the instruction connected to accessing this. If you can walk from where you are, and come and meet me. It is yours. Let's start. He's taking action. But is it an action of obedience? Look at this. 1991. 1992. 1993. Blaming technology. Blaming change of government. He's doing so many things with his life. And I'm here standing. 
and you are learning God using his life and you continue getting angry with me because this is the template of me you are studying from are you seeing that now you are using a very this man's life is misrepresenting my love misre when you study scripture and find out what God has said and you look at the life of a supposed believer it does not seem to add up now watch this for 15 years this guy's pain starts editing the theology of God's integrity because pain can start re-editing maybe God did not really mean this now imagine that this guy is a pastor and you are a member in his church. He will use his pain to start doctoring certain things about God. Are we together? Listen carefully. And then here comes this gentleman who came to Olive Brook Church from January. And had the opportunity to receive God's word. And now... He's learned that there is a responsibility component to accessing your inheritance. Now, gentlemen, walk, come and pick it up. Watch this. This guy will turn and say, this is not fair. I've been in this thing for 33 years. Based on what did you come and just access this? Healing, anointing, speed, prosperity. It is unfair. You are not supposed to be in this position. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. It says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Could this be you I just described? Could this be your business? Could this be your finances? Could this even be your ministry? The effect of this kind of life is pain that translates to envy and jealousy and anger. And this man may even turn away from the things of God. Like Peter, I go back to the village. I've tried this God thing and it does not seem to work. Ladies and gentlemen, God sent me here this morning to tell someone, before you turn back, listen. There is a way out. There is a way out. So this gentleman has accessed this. You find him walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. That's his testimony. What kind of a life is this guy commanding? He's walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. In three years, starting his company, he's already global. In one year of coming into Abuja, attracting strange dimensions of favor, what kind of a life is this? I tell you the difference is not the love of God the difference is not the provisions that grace has made available the difference is the faith component this man has taken the time to understand the dynamics of translating prophetic speakings to their experiential manifestation he's walking in abundance moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost Are you prophesying to your life? That I am walking in abundance Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost One more time, someone speak it to your life I'm walking in abundance Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost sit down gentlemen god bless you is someone learning at this service i'm trying to be as simple as possible because i want everybody to get this that as you leave this service you can know that so this thing is not a god problem this is the missing link you can run back home and say mama i found the key 
while we cry every night and we say God when will you hear me no a very sympathetic prayer but it has no power on its own the power component as far as the manifestation of God's word in the believers life is faith let's talk a bit more about faith please write Bible faith is predicated upon two attributes of God please write I pray that those outside are listening and following because someone's life is truly about to change and those who are following from across the globe following online I want you to pay attention the Lord may be speaking to you even at this morning service faith Bible faith is predicated upon two attributes of God there are two attributes of God you must understand to have Bible faith. Please write it. Number one, his integrity. The first attribute of God upon which Bible faith is built is called his integrity. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 very quickly. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Never forget that statement. God became a man for our sake, but he's not a man. Are we together? God is not a man that he should lie. That means men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. You know what a lie is? A lie is to say anything you do not have the power to defend. A lie does not just mean an untrue statement. A lie means anything you say without the wherewithal to make it good is a lie. You have the track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. A lie is not necessarily an untrue statement. When the Bible says God cannot lie, it doesn't mean God cannot say what is untrue because he calls things that be not as though it was. What it means is that anything God says, his power is sufficient to make it become what he has said. So based on that, God cannot lie. So if God calls a weak man strong, it will not be a barren statement because within his economy is sufficient power to turn that man to be strong. Are we together now? So men lie not necessarily because of the untruthfulness of their speaking, but they are so impotent in themselves. There are many things they will say that will not happen. God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent. The Bible says that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. Impossible. 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 Jesus said he would die and come back to life. That would have been a lie if after three days he was still in the grave. But on the third day, the power that raised Christ from the dead the Bible says the angel came, rolled the stone and sat on it. And the master came out with gallancy and honor, folded his clothes from the graveyard. I've said it that order can start even from the grave. He didn't rush out. There's no reason to rush. When you are king, he folded his clothes and came out. And a woman came out and saw him and said, Rabboni, she was about to touch him. He said, do not touch me, but be my first evangelist. Go to the doubting disciples who would later become my apostles. Tell them what you have seen. Let me accent to my father first. There is a coronation that is waiting for me. The Lord said to my Lord, when he ascended to heaven, the Bible lets us know that he went and poured his blood in that heavenly tabernacle to make atonement because you see according to the laws of atonement the validity of the atonement equals the age of the lamb that died so the lamb was always one years old so the, the validity period will be one years old but now an ageless lamb now poured his blood and poured it upon that to know how long your atonement it is to know the age of the lamb that died no wonder they say worthy is the lamb that was slain no other lamb was worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain 
to receive for us these sevenfold redemption realities honor riches wisdom and so on and so forth is someone learning this morning so faith is predicated upon number one the integrity of god find a way of indoctrinating yourself to believe that god cannot lie hmm. apostle but the child has still not come god cannot lie apostle i've been to abuja 10 years god cannot lie elizabeth i've waited so much god cannot lie how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man for status mary i'm about to give you an instruction that does not make sense but find a way of convincing yourself that god cannot lie someone prophesy to your doubt god cannot lie prophesy to every fear that has surrounded your life god cannot lie. man of god let the the mockery that ministry seems to be shouting towards your face here you speak god cannot lie listen i believe this thing i told you not because i'm a preacher honestly i have believed it through pain i have believed it through joy i know that god cannot lie when god tells you something any other thing that stands before you begin to wave it goodbye in advance because most people do not know the power that is exerted when God speaks. God cannot lie. Bible faith is based on that revelation. But the second attribute of God that sponsors Bible faith in the believer is his ability, right? His integrity and his ability. The word integrity comes from the word integer. It means same within as without. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. So God is not something else in terms of consistency of character. But then you can have integrity and sadly not have ability. I give you an instance. You can come and meet somebody and say, please, can you give me one million naira for my house rent? The person can say, sincerely, I want to help you. But the only challenge is that I don't have that kind of money now. That person has integrity. He's not corrupt. He's not playing you. Unfortunately, he may not have ability. It is painful to have integrity and not have ability. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 he saved oh, 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 Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him, not unto everybody, unto him who is able to do. Everybody say able to do. Yes. There are men who are able to say. But they are not able to do there are men who are able to advise but they are not able to do the capacity for performance is what defines ability are we together now yes 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 able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think this is a God that you serve, ladies and gentlemen. He is not just a God of integrity. They came to Jesus and said, if you be willing, you can help my son. He said, I am willing. Not only willing, but I have the power. You want to know how powerful God is? Ask Pharaoh. You want to know how God, powerful God is? Ask Darius. Ask Nebuchadnezzar. You want to know how powerful God is? Ask the Hittites, the Perizzites, ask all of them. They sang the song of Miriam that I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The God that breathes upon a sea and parts it hither and thither and causes people to walk on dry ground. Once upon a time, a foolish man mocked at God and said, even if you open the windows of heaven, Samaria would not be saved in one day. And he said, you will see it as a testimony that God does not lie, but you will not partake of it. 
the bible says time will fail me to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions that women who received their dead back to life my god is able to do just what he says he will do He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He's able. Watch this. There are men who want to give you jobs. Their integrity is not in question, but they do not have the influence, the financial wherewithal. There are many people who will see others and say, oh, I wish I had something to do. God does not have that ability to sit down and regret. Not when power, once have I spoken and twice have you heard, help me Olive Brook, that all power, all power, all power, all power, the power to heal, the power to prosper, the power to restore, the power to bring speed, the power to raise a champion out of a family that has never risen, the power to lift up your head. It says, I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord who is all powerful sustain me. It was Paul who was mentoring the church in Ephesus in chapter 1 of Ephesians. When you read from verse 16 to 19, he cried unto the God of our Father and he began to pray for the church. And here was the content of his prayer. Ephesians 1 from verse 16, he says that for this cause I, Paul, that I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are we together? And verse 17 now, let's finish up to 19. He says that he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18 says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Amplified says flooded with light that you may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. I like 19. He says and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word. When I, when I, when I, when I, when I read scriptures like this, it just tears up praise in my heart. Yabo dagazuchiya, yabo dagazuchiya, yabo dagazuchiya, napa. Maybe somewhere when I start praying for you, I will invite Solomon Lange to sing. There's a line in that song that I like. Hallelujah. Uh, he said, when the arm of flesh will fail them. Because the arm of flesh is very weak. Very weak. Very weak. But there is a strong, multi-breasted one. At the gate of death and Hades. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. And the ancient doors responded back. They were alive. Who is this king of glory? He said. <laughs> and there was a response. The Lord. Not the Lord wise. Uh -uh. This is not an issue of wisdom. The Lord strong. Strong over my family. Strong over my destiny. How dare you say I will not make it in life. You need to know the one who stands behind me as a mighty terrible one can i tell you hear me olive brook listen to me for someone you have come from a family where it is fashionable to look down on people like the nazarenes nathaniel looks and he hears about jesus and he says can anything good come out of nazareth he was not lying Go and find out about the Nazarenes. They don't have longevity of impact. Ask the man called Samson. They rise and they fall. So he said, Jesus, this is only a fly by night. He will not last.
when the angel came and met Zachariah and told him about John he had to shut his mouth as a priest until he agreed with God when they gave him the name he said nobody has been called in that family by this name by what means should you be called Victor by what means should you be called champion by what means should you be called prosperous it is a foreign experience in this family and the bible says god shut the mouth of all the naysayers until they came to a point where they agreed when zechariah wrote the name john his mouth opened it is within the power of god to shut the mouth of all the people who distract you and say forget about this lady it's all this zeal that church gives people listen ladies and gentlemen let me tell you do not forget all that i have taught you I'm teaching you now on faith that your confidence in God is predicated upon your awareness of his ability. Ability. Read your Bible and see what God did with men. God stopped kings from sleeping because he wanted to bless other people. Is that not in your Bible? God took village girls and cleared every other lady out of the way, insisted that they got into the palace. Is it not in your Bible? God took a prisoner who had been blackmailed and lied to by Potiphar's wife, forgotten by the wine presser. When it was time, God gave the king a dream and shot the heaven over the sorcerers. Nobody could see anything until that gentleman was fished out from the prison and he became a prime minister hours later. Maybe I should give you more credentials of this all-powerful God. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. It says, from whence cometh my help. Watch this now. He says, my help. He never said our help. It is costly to assume everybody is depending on God. This is a personal declaration. My help cometh from the Lord. Watch this. The Lord, the maker. I like that word maker do you know what it means to make when you want to talk about making men may not understand it so much let me talk to the ladies a bit when you enter the kitchen to make rice there are ingredients whatever it is that you use is what I'm talking about <laughs> are we together now and a woman enters with confidence just tells you be patient for two hours sit in the parlor while I make rice and begins to combine this salt this fire and at the end of it the aroma from the parlor is what lets you know that this making is almost done so when the bible calls god a maker you know what that means he takes your past your life your family the bad report and he begins to do what the bible says for we know that all things all things At the end of it, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies and says, the maker, the maker is ready. This is not motivation. This is spiritual reality if you believe. So I will not be surprised if by next week, someone returns to church pastor holding his hand on his head and saying after this conference i returned back and someone told me i'm about leaving nigeria i've been looking for a nigerian director for my company and the spirit of god said i should give you the keys to the company manage the company while i'm away it would be foolish to not believe that cannot happen did he not give one five talent two talent one talent and traveled and left them Now, there is one more attribute about God that helps you to believe him. It is the word Abba. The fatherhood of God is the final seal. Do you know what it means to be father? In scripture, the proof of fatherhood is not having children. The proof of fatherhood is the ease with which you give. When God has integrity, has all power, and is a giver, there is no reason to fear again he said if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give you are not a father if you just have children if you are greedy you are not abba the word abba means source sustainer 
defender, protector. That is the meaning of the word Abba. So I am aware that this God of the universe has integrity that God is all powerful. El Shaddai he is called. And then now it becomes a family affair. My interest is protected through relationship. Do you know what it means to be father? When pastor's child comes to meet him in the office or wherever, he does not come. You may have to queue because you are attending to your pastor. And they can just run and push everybody, including you, and go and hug the father. And based on what he has done, relationship makes what he has done to be no offense. If you do this, the protocol may query you and say, no, respect authority. And they are right. But now here comes someone whose past is relationship and he's able to move behind every veil of limitation and he goes to the father. Listen to what he told the prodigal son. The elder brother came and he was angry and said, this guy was a rebel and he ran away. I've been faithful in the house here and you did not even give me a little kid to celebrate with my friends. Now this guy who went to spend all his money with prostitutes and you are aware that this, you, you, you don't even know whether he came back home with HIV. You didn't verify. You just started cutting lambs for him. And the father made a statement. He said, son, you are always here with me and everything I have, everything, everything I have in this kingdom we are not given ownership but we are given access owners are rebels to own means you want it in your name to have access means it is limitless for you in the garden of Eden they were not given ownership you may eat of every tree it's not yours there's no ownership the prodigal son wanted it in his name and that's when lack started God does not give us ownership he gives us access. Listen carefully. The earth is the Lord's. He has chosen to give you access to it. I wish I had time. I would have taught you what the Bible calls the blessing of Abraham. Another time God will grant us grace. But you see, do you know what happened between God and Abraham? Most people thought he just gave Abraham the earth. No, no. The covenant between God and Abraham was based on two things. One, Abraham became the Abraham of God. Then God became the God of Abraham. Do you know what it means, the Abraham of God? Covenant that you and your seed will look unto me alone as father, as supply. Do not turn to idols. Do not turn to anything. If you make up your mind to serve me and love me and lead a generation to follow me, here is my covenant. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. I will make your name great. I will curse him that curseth you. Them that bless you, I will bless. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And Abraham said, yes, you will be my only God. I've made this covenant with you. And God carried the earth and gave Abraham as an estate. The three top religions in the world came out from the same man. Judaism, Islam, Christianity. All came out from the same person. Abraham. It doesn't matter what you serve. The foundation of your understanding spirituality will still be routed through that mysterious man. Abraham. The earth belongs to him to a point that when Jesus came, he had to submit to that order as that seed that was talked about. The only basis of our partaking of the Abrahamic blessing is through Christ. Galatians 3.29 And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, the Bible says, and heirs according to the promise. It is only through Christ. How can God carry the earth and give one man where there were other men that is the power of the covenant are we together yes, we're about to pray listen very carefully someone came to church today and you've been asking why are things not working in my life 
Listen carefully. In one word, faith is obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. From the example that I gave with the gentleman who came here, the difference between madness and coming my direction is that there was a prior instruction. I said, come. In John chapter 2, the first recorded miracle of Jesus, according to John's synoptic account, the Bible says there was no wine. Embarrassment was imminent in that wedding. Are we together? And then the disciples went and met Mary. And she said, whatever he says to do, that you do it. Jesus gave a very strange instruction. He said, Fix, fill six pots with water. And when he filled six pots, he said, now take that risk. Listen, let me tell you, in those days, they did not do counseling. You would die when you offend authorities. As simple as that. You don't carry water and take it to the rulers. You know the embarrassment that would mean? And Jesus said, just go, trust me. Trust me. Look at the person talking to you integrity ability forget about the water you are seeing trust me and they fetched that water and started moving do you know the risk lord are you aware that my life is on the line you are telling me to move to lagos whereas all my life i've been in kaduna i've been in benway you are asking me to leave uk and come to nigeria just when i'm not sure of the government what kind of risk is this it's like taking the water the bible says as they went the miracle happens as faith is being manifested not before lord change the water let me see then i will start no the signs follow they don't go before them that believe have to go forward first then the signs follow listen carefully they fetch the water and the people started going today might be my last day today might be my last day they may hang me but I trust this one and the Bible says as they went a miracle began to happen and when the rulers tasted it they said where did you hide this how how can it be that we come for a feast we've been here and then you refuse to bring the best wine now you are bringing it I'm sure the people will be smiling and taking the glory and just smiling as though it was their own creativity imagine the contracts those people will get from that wedding who would not want somebody to serve that kind of wine the Bible may not say that but by intelligence I mean if somebody it will be on the news everywhere a group of frail young men not having any power of their own brought wine that has pleased the king no wonder they look at us and they say we are mighty but it is the foolishness of fetching that water and taking the risk with our lives lord you mean i can serve the gospel to the nations as incapacitated as we are in our strength that's why when people say anything that looks good we direct it to the king of kings because we are aware he only gave an instruction and we obeyed do you have the power to turn water to wine you no do you have the power to turn someone from darkness to light you no do you have the power to cause a generation to hear your voice and listen attentively? No. But whatsoever he says to do, do it. Listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and we begin to pray. The Bible says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day. He says that the Lord God will exalt thee above all the nations of the earth. I read this scripture many years ago. And from that one small room, I believed it. When I looked at it, I truly believed it. And he says, all these blessings shall come upon you. I believed it. I made up my mind as a man of God that I was not only going to raise a spiritual people. I was going to raise people of tremendous global influence. I believe that but just believing blindly is absolute nonsense in the realm of the spirit you must be able to tie it to what God has said that is the basis for the release of power and I found Genesis 17 verse 6 he says 17 verse 6 give it to us Genesis 17 and verse 6 
read it please as a prophetic word for yourself one to read and i will make thee exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee now but you see just claiming the word will not do you good you have to find out the role you have to play please listen this as simple as it is is the missing link in our faith equation there is always something to do. I was telling my people at the miracle service on Sunday that the love of God for the believer is unconditional, but his promises are highly conditional. His promises are highly conditional. One more time, his promises are highly conditional. Why are they conditional? Because he must respect your will. He cannot assume you are excited to obey. So he leaves the condition so that your obedience proves you are in partnership with him. Your obedience does not add to what he's doing. Your obedience gives access so that what he has said will be made good in your life. He told the man, go and wash in Siloam, even though he knew he was a blind man. How do you tell a blind man to go to Siloam to wash? Why don't you save him the stress when you are an all-powerful God? Just open his eyes and let the man go. And you burden the man with another instruction as a blind man put more than spittle in his eyes and say go to Siloam because your act of taking that step proves that you believe me he tells a man who has never walked he said get up he didn't say help him get up pick your mat and walk how does God speak like that there will always be something that God will say to do as an expression of your faith for instance there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury. That does not make sense. How do you scatter and increase? That looks like a scam. You just want to manipulate my finances. You see, the Bible says, just as you do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child, so also you do not know the way of the Lord. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday, and we were examining the miracle working power of God. How that a woman will receive a fragile seed microscopic into her womb and from that seed will come a real baby whose bones you cannot break with your hand that is a mystery and that baby will grow one day to become a warrior who can lift buildings and lift cars from that seed so when God speaks you have no idea what you just carried when you can nurture that seed with faith it can grow to become anything that God has said. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.